Good afternoon, and uh, hope it's good where you're at. It's been a rainy day here, and uh, this kind of leads into my message for today. And uh, today it's Sunday. It's uh, May the 9th. It's Mother's Day here. And um, I didn't have a Mother's Day message this morning, but I do have a just a, a message about a woman uh, this evening. And I wanted to share that with you. If you would go to Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7. <clears throat> it was uh, an interesting morning, to say the least, um, at our service. And just um, difficulties with equipment. And um, so it was uh, got off to a rocky start, but we, we struggled through. So anyway, Genesis chapter 7. And I'm not going to keep you long. It says in verse number seven, it says, And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives, with him into the ark, because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And this was really the first rainy day the world had ever seen. Actually, many days to, re to create the flood. And we know about the fountains of the deep being broken up. And uh, it's really a story about a family here. Eight souls entered the ark. Eight souls were saved out of a world full of people. A world that uh, was unrighteous, uh, mankind was violent. As a matter of fact, it talks about it, I believe, in Luke. It talks about it in the days of Noah. Uh, so shall even be the coming of the Son of Man. And so uh, we know what those days are like. And this family, the head of it was Noah. And uh, God has uh, instituted uh, this man to lead his family. And uh, that's the same way it is today. But um, we don't know much about his wife. Uh, and uh, that interests me. This woman that uh, got on the ark with her husband, got on there with her sons, all of her sons, the way it sounds, uh, with all of their wives. And so, you know, sometimes we try to gauge... Uh, you know, we, we have marks of success for people. Uh, what makes a su successful family or um, what, is, what would be a successful mom? I'd, I'd say this lady was successful. Although we don't know much about her at all. Uh, we know more about what's not said. Um, there are a few things I think that we could pull out of this story and uh, would be maybe a help to us. We know that for 120 years, there's this approaching judgment of God. Now, I don't know how long they spent, um, you know, uh, working on the boat, uh, preparation of that. I know God gave Noah instruction on that. But it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2, uh, well, let's look at verse 1 and 2. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And I think it's, it's obviously speaking of mankind, man and woman. And so there's a lengthy period of time it would have taken to build this boat, this ark. Um. We've been down to see the uh, the replica of the ark uh, down in Kentucky. Incredible size of the of the ship. It would have been a, a considerable undertaking. Um, no thought that maybe it, it it could have been Noah. Maybe would have hired out some of the work. People maybe labored with him, uh, not just him and the boys. Um, but I know this, that any kind of project, any kind of undertaking like this as a family would have required faithfulness, not just of Noah, not just of the three sons 
Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but it would re have required a faithfulness on the part of his wife. And, um, you know, pardon me, I, I want to know her name. And uh, she, she no doubt was found faithful. Uh, there would have been uh, much that would have fallen on her. Uh, maybe she was involved in food preparation. They were going to be on this uh, ship for quite a while. And so uh, no doubt she rolled up her sleeves, uh, labored hard. Um, there would have been work um, that she would have been involved in. And maybe she's even involved in the building of the boat. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just saying that there's a faithfulness here. Uh, not just over a matter of days in this lady's life, but a matter of years of her life, she was faithful. And um, this faithfulness is rewarded, um, not just with the, the, the sparing of her life, but the life of her, her whole family. And so uh, I applaud her for, for that, uh, to, to stay steady. Uh, that, is, that is an incredible accomplishment, I think, on each of their parts. And... Um, for, you know, most people, it, it is an up and down ride. Um, and not to say that they were normal people, I, I believe. They were um, people, they're not superstars in, in the realm of, uh, of their religious walk with God. They're, they're normal people. Uh, and to, to be able to, to keep an even keel, uh, a level of faithfulness that... Uh, for a long haul is uh, worth pointing out. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is in Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse number 21. It, it's obvious to me also that uh, she was a submitted person. Um, she was gonna follow her husband. It says in Ephesians five, verse 21, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, wives, Submit yourselves under your own husbands as unto the Lord. And so she followed him in. Uh, she got on the boat. <laughs> um, and so uh, just getting on the boat is maybe just a picture of what uh, a level of submittedness and commitment. Uh, and it's obviously scripture teach, teaches a mutual submission in Ephesians and then a wife submitting to the authority of her husband of course, but um, there's there's something to be said here about um, just not only her faithfulness, but also a submission to what God has for her, a submission to a plan. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't get that it, it all went through Noah, that he received this plan, and she would have had to listen to that. She would have had to hear it, and no doubt he was convincing, um, but she said yes to this. She said yes to the plan. She said yes to the boat. She said yes to the labor. She said yes to getting on board. She got, she said yes to the, the door closing. Um, and you know, Lot's wife looked back with some level of longing that, uh, is, uh, marked in her life as uh, something not that we seek after. Uh, I don't get that from her. There's not this longing for the world, uh, I think she realized what she was being spared from, the literally the, the total destruction of, of mankind. And so uh, I see a faithfulness here. Uh, I don't think I'm reading more than that's in the story. I think faithfulness, I see submission. And then I also see this in First Peter, First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. It says this, it says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. The Lord says it's, it's the inward part of you that is uh, very, very important to him. And he calls out this thing, this quiet and a meek spirit. Um, it wasn't about her. Um, obvious for the story is very little told about her. Um, she didn't make it about her. Um, it seems like she made it about her family, about obedience to God. And so there's a quietness here uh, that is uh, almost um, 
in stark contrast to the world that we live in. Not just women, but men also. Uh, we don't live in a very quiet day. And I don't think they lived in a quiet day. Um, no doubt, it, different in the sense that we have all these platforms uh, that we speak from. Uh, we want to be heard. We, we have something we want to say. Even when we don't have anything really to say, we want to say it. Uh, I want to give you a piece of my mind. I want everybody to look at me. I want everybody to push the like button. Uh, I want everybody to uh, retweet what I had to say. Uh, so it's just, again, again, it's just all about this affirmation that we're looking for. Uh, we want the applause. We want this. Uh, we want it now. Uh, and there's very little quietness, very, very little meekness, uh, willingness to give up our rights. And so uh, people would say, I deserve this. I demand that. I don't think she's like that. Uh, there, there seems to be no self-seeking here. Uh, incredibly quiet, uh, uh, laboring. I don't, I don't think she was beat down. I don't think she was, uh, uh, someone that was broken. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't sense that at all, but I do sense that she was okay. She knew her place and she was okay with her place. Um, she was okay with who God made her. Um, and that's something today, to be okay with who God made you to be. Uh, she didn't desire to be anything more or less. Uh, I think there, no doubt there was a happiness in this uh, quiet service to the Lord, service to her husband, to her family. And so, um, like I said, she was rewarded with this. She got to get on. She was on the boat. She was there. She saw what God did. She she tasted of the provision of God. Now, I just want to give you just my opinion on something that heaven is, there's there's got, going to be a lot of stories told, um, testimonies or powerful things. Paul again and again told his testimony. And there are going to be things, we're going to sit around the feet of God, I believe, uh, sit in Christ is going to teach and tell us about who he is. But I also Personally, I, I think this is going to be play into some of this, is that we're going to walk with people that uh, walk through Scripture. I think we're going to be able to, to interact with them. Um, personally, I think there are people that, that I want to talk to, uh, people that I want to hear their story, the full story. Um, I've had, there, scripture, a lot of Scripture has been written about David and Joseph and Moses. A lot of Scripture written about uh, Peter um, Paul, no doubt, a lot of, a lot of scripture given. So we, there are details about their life we know, but there's more that we'd like to know. But there are people like Noah's wife that are almost unsung. Um, they, they stood in the shadows when somebody else got the limelight. They, they, they didn't have a lot of press coverage, um, not a lot written about them. That does not mean that they don't have a story to tell. I believe they have quite a story to tell. And I think heaven's going to be filled with these quiet, laboring, peaceful, uh, faithful people uh, that have something to say. And you may be that kind of person today. And you say, nobody's even noticed. Uh, God's taken notice. Um, I believe there are pages of our life that are being written, recorded in heaven and uh, yet to be told and everyone will see. Uh, all things will be manifest. And so I want to encourage you on this day that we celebrate moms uh, and we lift that up, motherhood. Everybody had a mom, and, um, and a lot of times our moms were very human and uh, uh, frail in uh, faith at times, and uh, we're, we thank God for them. But um, you know, there's there's a lot to, there's a lot that goes into this that um, you're you're gonna have a story to tell someday, and so just keep on and uh, continue to serve the Lord, and uh, one day you will step out of the shadows, and that'll be okay. So God bless you, and I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'm praying for you.